Welcome to the SBCA Podcast Component Connection. Looking at how businesses around the country are innovating to take advantage of opportunities in the construction supply chain. Now, here's your host, Sean Shields. Well, welcome, everyone. On today's podcast brought to you by the Structural Building Components Association, we are going to talk about turnkey framing. Now, builders may have received a big wake-up call this year with regard to raw materials, but the pain point they have consistently listed as their biggest hurdle to overcome is the shortage of field labor. Now, most builders today are actively seeking ways to maximize the output of their on-site labor, and one of the solutions that has gained a lot of traction lately is turnkey framing. Today, we are joined by Chris Tachi, president of the National Framers Council and a veteran framer who has recently expanded his company, Dynamic Construction, into the world of turnkey. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for having me on today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, Chris, let's start by defining turnkey framing. In today's market, what differentiates a turnkey framing contractor from, let's say, a typical framing business? Sure. At its most basic level, the difference between a turnkey framer and just a, a framing contractor is a, a framing contractor will be labor only. So uh, the material supplied by either a lumber yard um, or a component manufacturer who supplies loose materials as well. It could come from a number of different places, but the general contractor is is paying for it. A turnkey framing contractor is a, it's you're buying a total package. So we're supplying our own material and our own labor. So what you're getting is you're getting a whole package a general contractor only has to deal with us, whether that turnkey framer is supplying just loose and stick building on site or buying components, either, you know, trusses and floor trusses or trusses, floor trusses and walls from a CM and then sourcing the loose material from somewhere else. But basically, we're supplying all the material ourselves. Okay. What prompted you to want to become a turnkey framer? I mean, what did you have to gain in that new model that outweighed sort of the additional risk and responsibility that you're taking on? Sure, sure. There's there's a few reasons. Uh, I I tried to get a seat at the table for years. I tried to uh, I I tried to be involved in pre construction early on, give my input. The problem was that tailoring. A lumber package to a framer's needs adds cost. It adds cost to the lumber yard. It adds cost for the CM. It saves me a tremendous amount of labor on the other side, right? So nobody wanted me involved there. GC wants the numbers to say small. By being the guy who writes the check, I get to be the one who makes all the decisions, who makes the call on what shows up, when it shows up, and what it looks like when it shows up. And so, so that's a huge benefit. The other sort of part of that is I remember what, uh, what George Hull told me four or five years ago, why he does, why he went into Turkey, you know, you're doing the work anyway, Chris, you might as well get paid for it. And as a framing contractor, when I'm short material, I'm doing takeoffs. When I need to ensure, uh, something's going to go smooth, whether it's, uh, you know, building a set of stairs or an awning roof or or any part or piece of the building, I'm usually doing the takeoff myself and, and was sending it off to my lumber salesman or the lumber salesman that the GC contracted with to make sure I got the right stuff that I needed. So I'm already doing the work. I might as well make a few bucks off of it, right? So Chris, you joined the NFC. You gain a bunch of uh, perspective from the people, the framers that you meet through them. Some some mentors, if you want to mm-hmm. say it that way. Um, can you talk a little bit about like what the guys like George Hull, who you mentioned, and some of the other framers, sort of what did they talk to you about? What did they, what did they open your eyes to that you're like, you know what? I want that. I don't want to do what I was doing before. I want it. I want what they have. And, and what they told you uh, that helped you structure your business uh, in a way that could get you there. 
these guys were were very clearly on a completely different level that I was used to operating on. These guys are are buying huge lumber packages and selling it directly to GCs and sort of bypassing all of the the mess that I I would normally have to do with deal with doing labor only. Uh, that was really interesting to me. I wanted to know how they were doing that. Uh, what exactly that looked like, you know, as a labor only framing contractor, I really had absolutely no idea how a two by four got to the job site. Complete mystery. Um, and every, everybody obviously knows how lumber's bought and sold knows what, <laughs> what that really looks like. I decided I wanted to start buying and buying and selling lumber. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I started talking to, I, I, I sent, I remember very clearly one morning sitting at my desk and sending out an email. I sent it to, uh, I emailed uh, George Hull, Scott Stevens, Kenny Shiflett, and Bruce Jones. And, and basically said, uh, hey guys, I'm, I'm really interested in learning how to do turnkey. Um, it's the direction I want to take my business. Do you guys have any time for me that, you know, so I can learn? And uh, each one of them responded and and basically they all gave me, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of their time where I could just ask questions and, and jot down notes. I still have those notes hung up on my bulletin board. So I got really great advice from some of the most successful guys in the country. And that really that really got me on the right track for being able to accomplish my goals. That's interesting. You, you talk to these guys, they give you sort of their experience, their insight. I would imagine you don't just flip a switch and the next day you go out and start participating in, in that process of getting the lumber to the job site, which by the way, your comment about being a veteran framing contractor and really not having an idea about how the sticks arrive on the job site, you just work with them while they're there, uh, is... I think a good insight to add, mm -hmm. all the, the material suppliers out there, right? Oh, yeah. If, if the guys on, on the job site are the ones responsible for putting all that material together, but they don't know how it gets there. So it's insight into why they might not appreciate the importance of making sure that they're using the right material, like loose lumber, for example. They're using the right stick for the right job mm -hmm. because they don't know the amount of effort it takes to get that, that one board there, right? Well, I, <laughs> I agree, you know, just my time getting into sort of the buying and selling side of material has really given me a lot of insight and appreciation for the people I've dealt with over the years. <laughs> my business partner listens to your podcast and I had to get a glue lamb beam maybe a year ago. It was a 10 and a quarter by 18 inch solid glue lamb, really not easy to get. And I was on vacation and my partner came in on a Saturday and decided to work. And he called me while I was up in Door County and asked how hard it would be to get another one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just hang up on him? <laughs> I, I thought he was joking. And, uh, and, and I think he got a little irritated because he's obviously, you know, not feeling great about uh about needing a new one and uh <laughs> we got it figured out but i had no idea how many different places these parts and pieces have to come from in order to keep your costs reasonable uh and and do the job well and effectively no idea at all and 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 again i had spent 20 years oblivious to all of that so yeah that's a very real thing all right. So, Chris, that's interesting. You talk about the glue lamp beams, uh, and we just spent a little bit of time talking about the difficulty of bringing loose lumber onto the, the job site and, and all of that. But you're also bringing the entire framing package onto the, onto the job site, whether that's the roof trusses, the floor trusses, the wall panels. Uh, obviously, you needed to find a partner, a component manufacturing partner, uh, to do that well. Unfortunately, you found him. Uh, Sean Kelly with Automated Products. Can you share a little bit about what uh, collaborating with a component manufacturer like Sean has meant to your business? I mean, what does he make? How does he make what you want to do possible? And do you think you could have 
that that same level of success if you hadn't found someone like Sean? Definitely what what they do up at API uh, is one of the cornerstones to me being successful. One of the characteristics of Sean's operation is they're they're interested in serving me the framing contractor. They're very interested in what I want and how I want it. They want to make sure that everything in the field goes well and smooth, right? Um, And that's the reason I got into turnkey. It's because I want to serve my labor. So working with a CM who is interested in serving my needs, the, the needs of the labor side of things, is what's really streamlined our operation on site. One of my big sells to my GC customers is um, I hold my schedule. I take It takes me one week to do walls, one week to do the floor, one week to do the walls on top of that. And so you can count the stories of a building and you know what my schedule is going to be. And in order to maintain that, um, I need to partner with a CM who is going to... Uh, hit the production marks that I need. And uh, I'm not going to be surprised by anything that comes out. Well, and I suppose part of that too, is not only meeting your production schedule, but a big part of being able to hold your schedule is that, for example, uh, API will do batching for you, right? So when you are getting a load of wall panels in the back of a truck, there's already been a communication between you and API, for example, on how do you plan on laying those walls out, right? Mm-hmm. And yep. they are going to load them on under the truck in such a way that the first one you want to lay is on the top. So you don't have to unbundle all of those wall panels to get to the one that you want first, right? So you're not you're not humping those those panels all over the job site. You're just taking them off the truck and, and putting them in place, right? Yeah, absolutely. We've been working with them for a few years now and sort of the way everything comes out, I'm getting, I'm getting my exterior walls first. I'm getting my corridor walls second. I'm getting my demising walls and then I'm getting my interior walls. Having sort of a set system lends itself really well to their dispatch and their operations. They know, they know what's expected and there, there's some consistency there. But when it gets on site, my installers, my framers, know what they're doing first, second, third, and we're having a consistent system. Uh, additionally, um, they're sequencing for me. And I know, uh, I know sequencing, whether or not CMs do it, it varies greatly across the country. I, said, I got a few raised eyebrows at BCMC a couple of years ago when I said, if you think sequencing floor trusses in a factory is hard, try doing it in a foot of mud, right? Right. But you're right. They're, they're delivering things in, in a certain order, and I consistently know what I'm going to see and, and, wh- and where it all goes. So there's no, there's, there's no lag time between delivery and setting those bundles exactly where they need to go. We get a truck on site and 10 minutes later, walls are standing. Hmm. So let's stop today by looking at Sean Kelly's perspective. So if, we, if you put yourself in his shoes, how do you think his operation is benefiting from working so closely with you and your turnkey framing business? Sure. So there's a few ways I think, um, I think Sean's operation has benefited by doing business with me. Um, I've worked with the same designers, uh, their designers know what I want and know what I expect. And so there's a lot of what would normally be sort of pre-construction questions that, that they already know the answers to. I've got good relationships with the designers, with their dispatch, with everybody in that office. So when there's a problem, we can deal with it right away. And, and speaking of problems, oftentimes you'll get a tit for tat sort of relationship between your framing labor contractor Mm -hmm. and your CM or your lumberyard, there's conflict there. And everybody's looking to charge the other guy for whatever happens. We have an attitude uh, that not everything's going to be perfect. And I don't expect it to be perfect. We work as a team. We succeed as a team. Uh, And sometimes we have some failures as a team. 
And so when those, when those problems arise, I'm not looking to squeeze every dollar I can out of the situation. I'm not seeing it as an opportunity to uh, pick up a few extra bucks on hourly labor. We sort of take it as uh, teachable moments and we correct it and we move forward. And I know there's a lot of headaches out there for CMs from framing labor that when they set a truss on a top plate and it's not perfect, they start hearing about it and they start getting those phone calls. API does not get those phone calls from us. Mm. Um, we, we troubleshoot and we work together to solve problems. Excellent. Well, Chris, thanks for this insight. Uh, I know we're going to visit again for our next podcast, but thank you for being on this podcast. Thanks for having me, Sean. It's always, always a pleasure. Well, if you've enjoyed what you've heard, please give this podcast a favorable rating and share it with others. Also consider subscribing to SPCA's Component Connection podcast on whatever platform you use most. That way you'll immediately know when we publish our next podcast. And as I mentioned, Chris and I are going to continue our discussion on the framing profession and the framers council in our next podcast. This has been a Component Connection podcast brought to you by SBCA. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover in a future episode, send it to podcast at sbcacomponents.com.